Let's review what we learned at the last lecture. <coughs> OK, at the last lecture, the key concept we learned can be expressed as the following mathematical expression. OK, why is the displacement of a string and that depends on the position as well as the time that can be expressed as the sum of many sine waves for example sine m pi l x sine 2 pi f and t and is the uh, index that expresses the mode. Okay. The simplest case of this is the first mode look like this and the second mode look like that and the third mode look like this and this is x this is x and the change of this mode with respect to time is represented by this okay let me demonstrate what it really means physically okay okay you come out okay this essentially means that yeah okay means that any arbitrary uh, vibration in, in in space can be expressed as the sum of this mode, okay, this is the first mode because this is the easiest mode to make. And the second mode, I don't know whether I can make it, but let me try. No, you, you stop. <laughs> you are just the rigid boundary, okay? Okay, let me... Okay, this is second mode, as you can see, from this point to this part, there's a nodal point, and this part move up, and this part move up, this part move down. So there is a phase difference of a pi. And then third mode, okay, this is a third mode, and as you can see, we have a two nodal point. As we go up to the higher mode, what you can see is the oscillation Fn. Okay, is going up, and this one, because because n is a three now, so this one varies more rapidly than the second one. Okay, and then if, if I go up more, then you will see more rapid variation in space as I oscillate the string more frequently, Fn goes up. Okay, so what this equation really argue is the following. Any vibratory displacement can be expressed by summing up all these things and the contribution this is the contribution to yxt okay that's what we learned 
Thank you. Mr. Rigid Boundary Condition. <laughs> OK. So this means that any, any response can be expressed summing all these things. If you see the appendix one, and you will find out how to get an. We normally use the property, orthogonal property of normal mode. That simply says that uh, if we multiply sine n pi lx over here and integrate from here to there, then we will get the contribution of a sine n pi over l because sine n pi over lx multiplied by sine n pi over l is a sine square and the sine square is 1 minus cosine square divided by 2 therefore we have the contribution we can get the contribution okay The important characteristics you have to remember is that Fn, that is the frequency, okay, is a recipro reciprocal of the natural period. And those are related with m pi over L, as you just observed. We don't know how it is, it is related. We will find out the relation between m pi over L and Fn. And also in the last lecture we found that this can be expressed as one half summation a n but has the cosine something minus something plus cosine something plus something. In other words, this wave we often call standing wave because the wave does not propagate can be regarded as the superposition of two traveling waves because there is minus and plus traveling opposite side. Okay? So we, can, we concluded that this type of vibration is a special case of a traveling wave. Therefore, one could, one could say that the general traveling wave, or specifically speaking, displacement of a general traveling wave, can be expressed as right-going wave, that has a shape of G, okay? This is the uh, right-going wave that has a shape of cosi. So if I generalize the, what we learned from this using the simplest case, then we can say the general traveling wave would be the right-going right wave that has a shape G and the left-going wave that has shape H. Okay, that's general one-dimensional wave. 